In this video, we learn about the multiplication rule for probabilities. And to begin with, we'll be working with independent events. Now, to see how the multiplication rule works, we're going to be working through two examples. But first of all, let me get the formula out of the way. The multiplication rule states that given two independent events, A and B, the probability of A and B occurring, which we write like this, equals to the probability of A occurring times the probability of B occurring. And I'll go ahead and box that. Do make a note of it. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this symbol, which looks like an upside down U in between A and B, you can think of it as meaning and. So you could read this as the probability of A and B occurring equals to the probability of A times the probability of B. That being said, let's work through this first example. The experiment here consists of two things, rolling an unbiased die, as well as spinning the spinner that we have here. And for this experiment, let's say I'm interested in two events. The first event, which I'll call A, is to roll a 5 with the die. So I'll just say roll A5. The second event, which I'll call B, is for this spinner to stop spinning on the letter B. And so I'll write spinner, spinner, stops on B. And if it helps, you can imagine a pointer pointing towards the spinner. And so for event B to occur as we spin this spinner or wheel, it needs to stop with the arrow pointing towards B. Now, these two events, A and B, are independent events. And one way to see that is to realize that no matter what number we obtain when we roll the die, it won't have any impact on what the outcome of spinning this spinner will be. Indeed, whether we roll a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 with this die won't affect the likelihood of this spinner stopping on the letter B. Consequently, these two events, A and B, are independent. And so as we do this experiment, if we wanted to calculate the probability of both events A and events B occurring, then we could use the formula we wrote at the top of the screen here. And we could state that this equals to the probability of A times the probability of B. So all we really have to do here is find each of these two probabilities. And we definitely know how to do that. When rolling the die here, there are six possible outcomes. And I'll go ahead and write that. There are six outcomes. And since only one face on this die has the number 5 written on it, the number of outcomes that correspond to rolling a 5 is 1. And so we can write that the probability of rolling a 5, so that's the probability of an A occurring, equals to 1 over 6. Working in a similar way for the wheel here, or the spinner, we can see that there are four possible and equally likely outcomes, A, B, C, or D. So I'll just write that. There are four outcomes. There we go. And only one of those outcomes has the letter B on it. So the probability of event B occurring equals to 1 over 4. Now that we found both of these probabilities, we go back to our formula here and state that the probability of both A and B occurring equals to 1 over 6 times 1 over 4. In other words, the probability of A and B occurring equals to 1 times 1 over 6 times 4 which is 1 over 24. And that's the answer. And if needs be, we could write in parentheses that that's equal to 0 0.0417, where I've rounded to three significant figures. Okay, let's look at the second example. In this case, we have some sort of a box, inside of which there are five marbles, three of which are blue and two of which are purple. And let's say an experiment consists of picking a marble at random, making a note of its color, then putting it back inside the box before picking a second marble at random. And for that experiment, I'll go ahead and define two events. So one will be event B, in which we'll say we pick, pick a blue marble, blue marble, there we go. And event P, in which we say we pick a purple marble. Okay. Now, let's say I want to find the probability of picking a blue marble followed by a purple marble. Well, first of all, since each time we pick a marble, we place it back inside the box, these two events are independent. Indeed, whatever the color of the first marble is, since we're placing it back inside the box, that won't have any impact on the likelihood of the color of the second marble. So the two events B and P are independent, and we can use the formula we have here. 
and we can state that this equals to the probability of picking a blue marble times the probability of picking a purple marble. Now, since there are five marbles in total, and three of them are blue and two of them are purple, we can state that this equals to three over five, that's the probability of picking a blue marble, times two over five, which is the probability of picking a purple marble. Now, multiplying these two fractions together, we quickly find that the probability of picking a blue marble followed by a purple marble equals to 3 times 2, which is 6, over 5 times 5, which is 25. So that's 6 over 25. And that's the answer. And if needs be, you could write that as a decimal as 0 0.24. Okay. How about the probability of picking a blue marble followed by another blue marble? Well, again, we're dealing with independent events, so we can use the formula we have here and state that that's equal to the probability of picking a blue marble times the probability of picking a blue marble. So that's equal to 3 over 5 times 3 over 5. And now multiplying these two fractions together, we quickly find that the probability of picking a blue marble followed by a blue marble equals to 9 over 25. And that's the answer. And as always, if you want to write that as a decimal, that's equal to 0 0.36. And there we go. Now, let me finish by saying something about this second example. When calculating the probability of picking a blue marble followed by a purple marble, the order there matters. Indeed, this probability of 6 over 25 corresponds to the probability of picking a blue marble first followed by a purple marble. And this is important because if all we were interested in was knowing the probability of obtaining a blue and a purple marble in any order, then we'd also have to consider the case of obtaining a purple marble first followed by a blue marble. In other words, if all we're interested in is knowing the probability of picking a blue and a purple in any order, then we would have to take into account the fact that that can happen in two ways, either blue followed by purple or purple followed by blue. And the key word to remember there would be or. And that's one of the things we'll be learning about next. That is, we'll be learning how to calculate the probability that one event or another occurs. So in this case, that would be the probability of blue followed by purple, or purple followed by blue. For now, though, we now know the multiplication rule for probabilities of independent events. And that's it for this tutorial.